While considerable progress has been made in poverty reduction and the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals, unsustainable use of natural resources has resulted in widespread environmental degradation and accelerated the impacts of climate change that threaten to undermine development gains and breach planetary boundaries. Our current patterns of consumption and production globally cannot raise living standards without breaching those planetary boundaries. Unless issues of equity and sustainability are properly addressed and addressed together, the current human development trajectory risks grinding to a halt and even regressing. Um, environmental sustainability is a very important issue and uh, if, if we um, uh, really um, make uh, some progress, it will reflect on, in other uh, part of the goals. There are unprecedented calls for an ambitious and universal post-2015 agenda that promotes transformational integrated development approaches geared towards meeting the challenges of eradicating poverty and protecting the planet's resources. Forward-looking macroeconomic policies focused on sustainable growth and the promotion of environmentally sustainable development patterns should be pursued. This could be facilitated by the adoption of a new system of national accounting, capturing not only economic, but also environmental stock and flows. The United Nations has been working with national governments on economic valuation of natural resources and establishing natural capital accounts aimed at highlighting the importance of environmental sustainability for pro-poor economic growth. With this support, the government of Rwanda made an economic case to integrate poverty environment into its national planning and budgetary frameworks through a study on the economic costs of environmental degradation. Findings suggested that soil erosion is a primary cause of decline in land productivity, costing the country about 2% of GDP. Poverty had increased and people's livelihood opportunities had declined because of environmental degradation. The economic analysis has helped Rema government of Rwanda to make our case by telling policymakers, leaders, you people, if we don't take care of environment, this is the cost. As a result, the government of Rwanda has highlighted environment as a separate sector and the budget classification. In Botswana, Policymakers wanted to know how the country can optimize its natural resources while also improving its management and further building social capital. Through the WAVE's global partnership with the World Bank, the government is building national accounts on minerals, energy, water and land tourism, and livelihoods. This is helping the government of Botswana estimate the true contribution of the country's natural resource sectors to economic development. The impacts of investments on the environment are likely to hit the poor the hardest. Public investment as well as incentives for private investment in green technologies should therefore be strengthened to secure clean water, air and energy as well as to reverse the trend of increasing carbon dioxide emissions. In the Philippines, the Poverty Environment Initiative has advocated for local governments to shift towards green development Ilocos Norte is hosting the largest wind power energy project in Southeast Asia, helping to reduce the country's dependence on imported oil and coal, providing a cheaper source of power, job opportunities for local residents, and tax revenues. In Nepal, local governments have increased the funds they have allocated to green development. Actions include subsidizing biogas and solar panel installations and promoting sustainable agricultural practices. Daura dhere kharcha huni bhayo, gas bhayo beshi kam lagni bhayo. Ani sudhareyako chulo banaudha ani daura thorai lagni raicha. Teti bhara huncha. Dhuwa dhulo bata pani jogine sakyo. Sas parsas bhanne euta pneumonia ko rog huncha ni, tyo pani na lagni bhayo. To promote environmentally sustainable development, environmental externalities should be priced into goods prices through carbon taxes or other schemes. In Bhutan, a green tax on private transport has been approved to reduce carbon emissions. If we uh, follow the environmentally sustainable and inclusive development path, of course the whole population will benefit, but it will be the poor who will benefit the most. 
macroeconomic strategies that use all available policy instruments to balance the objectives of inclusive economic growth with socially acceptable distributional outcomes and environmental sustainability are essential for achieving sustainable development.